Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, this is Earned Happy Endings. I'm Lily Holman and you are assembling upon the second video of the Manic Pixar Dream Girl series part 12 on the Blue Umbrella. Um, and last video I highly recommend you go back and watch before you watch this video um, was all about film theory and film history and how that tangentially relates to the blue umbrella. Um, but now we are actually going to dive into the film as a whole and in this video we're actually going to talk about kind of generalizations when it comes to the film. Um, talking about the big picture um, before we kind of dive into the intricate plot details. Um, and to start we're going to talk about story because that's where everything begins. So let's do that. So like I said, for the Blue Umbrella, just like every Pixar film, the core is in the story. Um, the story behind the Blue Umbrella is deceptively simple, which I think is one of the reasons why this film is constantly forgotten or people just haven't seen. Or you watch it and you think, well, it's just a love story and you kind of don't engage with it as much. But when you stop and think about it, it's the, simple, the simplicity of the story is quite big. So, yeah, I'll explain why. Um, so, it is, at its core, a classic Hollywood love story. Think about every rom-com you've ever seen. If you're lucky enough, go watch an old, watch old romantic comedies, old screwballs. You're going to see the story. It's boy meets girl, boy falls in love with girl, girl gets away, boy gets girl back. Ta-da! That is the classic Hollywood love story. Um, and it is a story that is a convention, but a convention that serves the film's tone and purpose. Um, and so the filmmakers ultimately want to portray an idealized world that exists just beyond the notice of the general public. Um, the plot of a romantic comedy is a fantasy occurring in an ideal world full of loopholes, coincidences, and magic that bring together the two lovers perfect for each other. And I should note, once again, Girl Meets Boy... We're just, we're talking Hollywood history here. We've made huge, leap, wonderful leaps and strides and that it is no longer just girl meets boy. It's boy meets boy and girl meets girl and um, um, people who don't exist in the gender binary meet other people. Like, it's, everything is different now. Um, but in terms of the generic Hollywood love story, um, it comes from a less progressive era, and it is a boy meets girl. Um, and I, it's, this is going to become an issue again when we talk about the umbrellas themselves, because they're not. Um, there's nothing explicitly gendered about them, other than the colors and the eyelashes. Um, and so I'm going to um, be a little bit lazy and go back to calling them boy and girl, but I want to make it very clear that that is not a hard statement on their gender or their identity. That is just a convenience so that we can focus on other things, um, but that I want to make very, very, very clear because they are not gendered and that is a beautiful thing. Anyways, back to what we were saying. Um, so the filmmakers have chosen a convention that traditionally uses what looks like reality to depict an inherently unrealistic story. What makes this strategy appealing is how much the audience wants a romantic comedy plot to be true. They want to believe in a world where lovers live happily ever after, no matter what. Um, so it is no different with the Blue Umbrella. By buying into a fantasy and wishing it to be real, the audience share in Pixar's inherently optimistic worldview. The animators have the power to manipulate reality, and they use it to construct a world where love wins out and the community comes together to help one of their own. Um, they imbibe their inanimate objects with the best of humanity and make us wish for it to be real. What makes The Blue Umbrella different from the many other Pixar films that strive to do the same is the fact that the animators behind The Blue Umbrella do not create a magical world separate from the audience's everyday reality. Instead, the filmmakers want to show off the potential magic intrinsic in our reality. So, to make the cliched notion of boy meets girl plot more original, the filmmakers apply a twist quite familiar to the studio. The leads are anthropomorphized umbrellas. Um, I can never pronounce that word right. Anthropomorphized. 
brought to life. Um, the choice is key in making the animation style work. It is an element of pure imagination that allows the rest of the film to look so real. It also reminds the audience that this is a Pixar film, even though it looks like a live-action film. And that's key when we're thinking about branding. So, it is a return to the look and concept behind Luxo Jr., just as Lassiter started Luxo with a static shot of a realistic-looking lamp and then brought it to life, the Blue Umbrella starts with static shots of a city and brings the entire city to life. It is an update and expansion of that basic concept, but the spirit is the same. Um, the medium allows the filmmakers to make the familiar fantastical, and part of the charm of films like Luxo Jr. and Toy Story, like I said before, is that audience can imagine their own objects coming to life behind their backs. Um, so separating these newly animated objects from the human world was never of the was never the goal of filmmakers like John Lasseter. Um, the lifelike animation of the Blue Umbrella actually makes this leap even easier because the objects are not only coming to life, they are coming to life in a world that looks like ours. As if the film is bringing the magic into the real world as opposed to keeping it in a separate reality. So, um, it's more like we're not having to go to Hogwarts to get our magic, we're just looking outside. Make it a little more sense? I hope so. <laughs> um, so there's one way that the film differs from Luxo, however, and that allows the rest of the film to work, and that is the fact that the umbrellas have faces, and their faces are simply drawn and really look more like a child's drawing than a real-life face. And this was a huge challenge when I first looked at this film. It's like, why are they making the faces like that? And well, I'm going to tell you. So, they are the only elements in the film that are distinctly cartoonish, and they add to the likability of the, like I said, assumed male lead. Um, but part of the reason the audience roots for the Blue Umbrella is his childlike optimism and innocence. This comes through in his wide-eyed, simple face, and the face gives him the personality Thomas and Johnson explain in regards to cartoon faces. He has the expressive eyes, and the simplicity of his face makes his emotions and reactions abundantly clear. While the, West, while the rest of the world is obsessively detailed, the Blue Umbrella's face stands out as bold and clear. So, a, an umbrella, unlike a lamp, actually, doesn't have a lot to be manipulated. Um, so there's not a lot of body language that can bring it to life. And it also has to stay rigid in order to still function as an umbrella. So you're not going to see the careful little... You're going to see things like it, but not in terms of body language when it comes to, like, the Luxo Wiggle. So he's going to have personality, but he's, his personality is going to come across in different ways. Um, so this is all why his face needs to be expressive and easy to read. Um, the choice of the characters as umbrellas also serves as a practical element for the plot. They are ultimately helpless characters in that they are at the mercy of the people carrying them. It means that it is difficult, if not impossible, for the characters to have agency. This plays on audience sympathies because we have to witness the characters struggle against near impossible odds, and when the blue umbrella finally does try to act on his instincts, we root for his determination all the more. He is not taking the easy route, and that is what makes him a hero. And so next video, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, and we're going to talk about plot details, but think about these big picture things. Like I said, it's all about thinking this week. So think about the film theory. Now that you've thought about the film theory, think about the bigger picture of the blue umbrella in Pixar's context, and then we're actually going to talk about what happens in the movie. Awesome.